Dr. Mark Changizi here with your science moment. Politics, understanding society isn't rocket science. In fact, I even hear people say this off the cuff. They go, look, this isn't rocket science. The explanation for this massive psycho societal event across society isn't rocket science. It's actually due to this or that. And um, that couldn't be further from the truth. Um, and uh, it's actually much, much, much more complicated than rocket science. Uh, before we get started, a little bit of news. Next week, um, I'll be representing the Free Expression Research Institute in Washington, D.C. The, uh, the New Civil Liberties Alliance is putting on a their lunch and law panel discussion, and um, I'll be on their panel discussion talking about uh, these First Amendment violations by the Biden administration over the last year and almost a half. Jill Hines, um, will be there as well. Come go find uh, the uh, announcement about it at markchangizi.substack.com. Uh, you can attend in person or virtually. It'll be on Thursday at 12.15 uh, uh, next week, uh, September 29th um, of 2022. So um, people will sometimes say, look, it's not rocket science. The reason this is happening is because so-and-so did this to that and the money is going there. And so therefore Pfizer and these kinds of things, it's not rocket science. And it, 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 one of the things that brings, it makes me bring this up today is that you know, NASA is actually doing interesting, uh, potentially dangerous, but still it's an interesting story, rocket science. They've been, they shot up a rocket up towards an asteroid millions of miles away, and they're going to impact it with a small explosion and see whether they can redirect the asteroid. And so I joked on Twitter, I said, look, if these are the same kinds of experts, you know, the sort of experts that we got, we've been familiar with, this redirect of this asteroid is definitely gonna take out civilization uh, in due course. And I jest because um, rocket science is actually, uh, in terms of, it's not just the rockets themselves, but actually uh, tracking the path of the rocket and the boosters that it has to have at the right angle and the right escape velocity to make it to exactly that point with minimal use of its own energy and so forth is 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 um, is infinitely simpler. It's still complicated. Uh, you still have a lot to learn, but it's infinitely simpler, and you can work out it, work it out mathematically, and model it exactly, and analytically solve it even exactly in ways that you can never do for things like brains and things like ecosystems and habitats and societies. Um, to say that something is rocket science is, yeah, a general kind of um, thing that we, we say in society to suggest something is hard. Um, and most of us have the feeling that for politics and for, for societal level events, that we can just walk in the door and talk about it. So oh, yeah, well, in my opinion, is this clear that, that you know affected that and A hit B and that caused C. And this is a kind of hubris that I think we all need to be uh, uh, slapped about because I wouldn't claim, even though I'm a physicist, you know, undergrad and PhD in math, I wouldn't ever claim to be able to do the kinds of rocket science that could, I mean, without significant, you know, further effort to do the kinds of rocket science that they did to be able to get the rocket to make it to that asteroid in the ways that they did. I wouldn't um, have, even though I talk a lot about epidemiology and things like this, it's only because I'm constantly looking at actual, you know, like the Center for Evidence-Based Medicine at Oxford since the beginning of March 2020, that those and many other sources from epidemiologists, public policy folks that I, I came to trust and I could see the real data. I wasn't an expert in these in these areas and did the, to, I had no confidence that I understood these fields. I didn't understand uh, 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 virus uh, dynamics because it was frankly a boring field. I didn't understand epidemiology. It was boring before 2020. But people walk in the door thinking that they have the tools to understand the dynamics that occur in complex systems at the societal level. Right? And we don't, um, none of us do. The people who have the tools to potentially do that are those that study complex systems, who understand emergent phenomena, who understand evolution, natural selection, these kinds of selection forces. And it's not just um, large scale dynamics and complex systems, each entity in it is itself an incredibly complicated creature with all of these emotions, emotional expressions, and the way they interact with other. This is an immensely complex system. And I'm not going to claim that I understand it. This is the kind of research that I've done my whole life, that we're doing, Dr. Tim Barber and I are doing it at FreeX, FreeX.group, the Free Expression Institute. It's incredibly hard. There could be other scientists coming with the same tools who could be much more brilliant than we are, much better than we are at explaining these things. But without those kinds of tools, 
for studying complex systems of this kind, one is ill-equipped. One is not equipped whatsoever to even tackle the kinds of problems, right? And unfortunately, people just think, well, I've, I've watched, you know, I've, I've been watching all of these events, and so uh, I think I've come to an understanding of them. But these events aren't uh, linear causal events where somebody made somebody else do this and controlled them down the line like this is what we've talked about. These events are much more complicated. There are selection forces that suddenly create through no purposeful thought by any particular person often create narratives, create new ideas. Um, th these things can sweep through and new kinds of notions of righteousness will come into it, not by virtue of any designer that did it. And sometimes there can be designers, but very often there's not. And it's a mix of all of these things. It's very complicated and very hard to understand. And um, so I've been thinking about ways to best convey to folks the sheer complexity of what's going on in events like COVID and the COVID collective hysteria and all of the authoritarian, rise of authoritarian and uh, violations of civil liberties over the last two and a half years, trying to get people to appreciate the scale of the complexity that's involved. And so that they just say, oh my God, I don't, and, and I, that's my attitude is that, look, I, I don't know how to explain it all. I believe that we have the beginnings of the kinds of tools to understand it. But if you properly understand the degree to which these things are complicated, massive networks, massive feedback back and forth, top down, up, up, bottom up, and side to side, and these are humans, um, the most comp you know the, the most complicated brains in the universe, um, uh, times billions, then this is not an easy problem. Stop pretending that you understand societal level dynamics more than you understand rocket science. Societal level dynamics with billions of humans who are, are incredibly bright is orders and orders and orders of magnitude more complex than rocket science, more complex than epidemiology, and so forth. All right. That was your science moment. If you haven't gotten a copy of Dr. Tim Barber and my new book, Expressly Human, which is about the mathematical foundations, the psychological foundations of emotional expressions, why we have them, what they're for, and it undergirds how all humans, in fact, communicate, argue, discuss, and how reputation networks, how the, these societies filled with networks of people who rise and fall in reputation, how it works. That's your science moment.